Let's be honest, all of The Sims games are, to an extent, burdened with bugs, obstacles and limitations, some of them intended to make the game more challenging, while some others just oversights. The Sims 2 is no exception, and is admittedly full of those things that may make playing the game more annoying or complicated than necessary. Like, why do I have to go to a community lot just to give my freshly aged up sim a decent outfit? And why do I travel back in time when I come back home? Why do my sims get up at 6am by themselves for no reason, just to go and set their kitchen on fire because they decided to go back to their bedroom and make their bed while the toaster paste was still in the oven and there was nothing on earth that could have stopped them from doing so? Well, they won't anymore, thanks to our legendary modding community. Today I am bringing you a bunch of mods that make the game easier and more rational to play and add features that help put you fully in control of your sims and their surroundings without it feeling like cheating, mostly. These are, to me, the absolute essentials for playing out my stories and managing my sims' lives better. I'm gonna cover as many aspects of the game as I can. Household management, social interactions, education, skill building, easier customization, improved user interface, preventing corruption, and some more. But before we jump in, I have to mention that all links will be in the description as always, and a lot of these mods only work if you have Saijun's Smarter EP Check installed, so download that mod before you download anything else from here. This doesn't add any new features to the game, nor does it conflict with anything, it is just necessary for the other mods to work. Okay, now let's get started. Here are some mods that make managing your households easier. I might not always say the exact name of the mod, if it has any, but you get the idea and you will be able to find all of them in the description either way. So first up is Community Time Project, and it might just be my favourite mod ever. A lot of people, when they first play The Sims 2 or first play in a long time, they complain about time being frozen on community lots and things not progressing in the household while they are away. Well, with this mod, this is no longer an issue. I will go as far as saying this is probably the best way of managing time in all of The Sims games. The default system in The Sims 3 or The Sims 4 doesn't even come close. Because with this mod, you don't need to make any compromises. You can play all Sims in a household, the ones that went to a community lot and those that stayed behind in the house, during the same hours. Not quite simultaneously, because that's not possible, but you get to play both of them in the same time period. How this works is, let's say you have Sim A and Sim B in a household, you send Sim A to a community lot at 6am, you spend some time with them over in the community lot until like noon, and then at noon you send them back home, so you come back to the household, and it will still be 8am, but Sim A will not be back home yet, they will not come home until noon. And during that time their needs also won't change, so when they come back home at noon, they will be in the same state as they were when they left the community lot, as well as in the same time. And this way, in the morning, you can play with Sim B just without having the other Sim that went to community lot around. Now, you cannot send Sim B to another community lot in that time, but you can of course send them to work, school, anywhere that doesn't involve having to load up another lot. When you come back to the lot, you will get this message in the corner of your screen informing you about when your Sim will be back home, and how much time is remaining until then. In this time period, while your sim is still away, there are two things though that you should not do. One of them is closing the notification, because that will bring your sim home immediately and that defeats the purpose. And the other is save and exit the lot, because then when you enter the lot again, they will be home just the same and they will also have their icons stuck and you don't want that, so just be cautious. Before this mod, I felt discouraged from ever sending my sims to community lots because it was so unrealistic and impractical to have your sims out on a day trip only for them to come back and it still be the morning but all of their needs be in orange and red and still have to play the same day with them. So this mod is a pure blessing. I will even go as far as saying if you had to get just one mod in The Sims 2, it should be this one. Phew, that was long, I won't talk so much about the other mods, I promise. So next one is Low Food Warning. This mod will give you a notification before your household's food supplies run out, so you can still send your sims to a grocery store or order some food over the phone before your sims almost starve to death with no food at home. Next is also to do with food. Eat more, talk less. Does just what it says. 
I think we all hate how sometimes Sims will literally starve to death before they quit talking and actually eat what's on their plate. Family dinners can last 2 or 3 hours, it makes no sense. With this mod, your sims will only share a few words each time over the dinner table and only if they aren't really hungry. Simply Leftovers lets you put away leftovers as single plates instead of the whole group meal. Don't walk away while cooking. Stops your sims from getting distracted while having something in the oven and walking away and doing something else and then accidentally letting the house burn down. They will just stand there and wait for the food to be ready. So this is a practical safety measure. These next three mods using accessible beds, trimming accessible bushes and watering accessible flowers are evident. They make life so much easier, especially the beds one. Sims will be able to get into the bed even if it's next to a wall or anything else. The animations for this might be a bit off at times, but it does the job. Next one is more sleep, quite literally. Now let me tell you, I do find this unrealistic, especially looking at my own life, but you will now be able to send your sims to sleep at midnight, even if they are not tired. I love sending my sims to sleep and just being done with them for the day. I know that sounds bad, but it's true. I micromanage them so much, sometimes I need a break. So it's great to be able to force them to go to sleep. Next one is smarter lights. To put it short, lights will turn off by themselves in the house at appropriate times. It works much better than the in-game auto lights function. Monix hacked computer can be a lot of help. You can do stuff like pay the bills online, start separate bank accounts for your sims in the household, shop for things online so you won't have to go anywhere, take out loans, etc. You can even study skills on it. This modded alarm clock can be a lot of help around the house when you have sims who have to repeatedly get up early in the morning. It has a lot of more functions than the one in the game. You can assign it to a certain sim so it won't wake up the whole room. You can set it on for certain days of the week. Really useful. I also love this modded open and close sign for businesses. You can automatize when you open the business and when you close it and when your employees should arrive and go home. This works both on home businesses and community lot businesses of course. And the last one I have in this section is Bible Electronics. You can buy cell phones, handheld games and mp3 players from the catalog like you would with any other piece of furniture. It's just practical, you won't have to go to a community lot to get it. Next up are mods for social interactions. Two great tools for managing romantic relationships are just be friends and friendly breakup. With the former, you can cool down a romantic relationship just like you would be able to in The Sims 4. So the two sims will lose their romantic feelings for each other. And friendly breakup makes the breakup option available for sims who are in a committed relationship, no matter how good or bad their relationship is. There doesn't need to be fighting involved to break up a relationship. Found family is great, especially if you have a big neighborhood you've been playing for a long time and you found that most sims ended up being somehow related to each other, even if just distantly. You have the option to click on a sim and choose tree as family so that your selected sim will not accidentally start flirting with their second cousin or something and vice versa. Because the game by default does not recognize relations that are this distant to be family relations. Hell, it doesn't even acknowledge great-grandchildren as family, let alone second cousins. But this mod is the remedy for that. This next mod that I don't know how to refer to makes dates and parties and making friends so much easier. You can command your sims to socialize on their own without your instructions. They will keep interacting with a certain sim, whether that be in a romantic way or a friendly way or an unfriendly way, you choose. Just select your sim, click on another sim and choose macro socialize. It takes care of the repetitiveness of building relationships. Customers leave and leave business help running a business a lot. With customers leave, your customers will leave immediately after paying, they will stay around to talk to other customers or talk to your employees. They will just turn around and leave with the stuff they bought, just like they would in real life. And leave business makes it easier to close the store and go home in time, because your customers won't stay around to play chess and use your hot tub and all of that crap after you've closed the store. On to the next category, which is customizing things you otherwise wouldn't be able to customize. First up is Gossy Up. With this mod, you can instantly modify the appearance of any sim, you don't even need to make them selectable. You can change their appearance, buy them clothes for free, 
plan their outfits, give them plastic surgery, etc. Really great for sims who just aged up into complete random outfits and random townies you catch being ugly out on the street. Oh yeah, also I'm not mentioning the townie mods because I talk about those very much in depth in those videos. Two mods that are essential for customizing sims further are the sim manipulator and the sim blender. You can pretty much use one or the other, but both have a few functions that the other doesn't. I use these for changing my sims aspirations, turn-ons, messing with their ages, changing their outfit instantly anywhere without even having to press play, changing the weather, teleporting sims over, adding sims to the family, turning sims into townies, all of that stuff. Another object that I also constantly use is the FFS slot debugger. As the name suggests, it's useful for debugging things, but that's not the only thing that I use it for. I also give my sims degrees with it if they did not get the chance to earn one throughout their life because I created them as adults or something. Next is marriage last name chooser. So by default in the game, if you have two sims get married, they will both get the last name of the sim who initiates the marriage. With this mod, you not only have the option to not have to change last names, but also to choose which sim's last name you want to choose for the couple. Obviously, you can change last names with the sim manipulator, I do it all the time, but you do spare yourself some trouble if you use the marriage last name chooser mod. Similarly, you can choose the last name of a newborn baby with the baby last name chooser. You can decide if it gets the mom or the dad's last name. And the last one here is build and buy mode enabled on community lots. This is exactly what the title is. You get the chance to enter build or buy mode when you send a sim to a community lot. And you can also do things like put stuff in your sims inventory. Next category is education and skills. With community skilling, your sims can gain skill points on community lots. With jump rope fitness, your sims can gain body skill points from jumping rope. I think this is something that should have been included in the game as well, but bookshelf hack is especially useful for dorms. With this mod, sims won't want to take newer and newer books off of bookshelves just to leave them laying around everywhere. They will prefer to pick up the ones that are already laying around. Talking about college, the most practical college mod is semester changes. Because college in The Sims 2 by default is incredibly unnecessarily long. 24 days to be exact. Well, with this mod, it's just 8 days. Each year becomes just one semester and that one semester will last 2 days. And it is doable. Believe me, I've been doing it a lot. With this mod, I also recommend you download later classes. This way, exams and classes won't clash. Next one is young adult move out of college. It gives you a choice that even if your sims fail university or drop out, they won't have to leave the college neighborhood instantly. They can do that anytime later if they use the phone and choose to move back to the main neighborhood. Also applies to sims who have just graduated. They don't need to leave instantly, so they can wait for their friends to finish university as well. On to high schools and whatever you call what's below it. Desk locator helps them memorize where the hell they need to put their homework down when they come home from school. You put this item on a certain sim's desk or on a shelf above their desk and they will always bring their homework to that table, not into their siblings room or onto the dining table or onto the floor in the living room. Okay, let's talk about user interface. So you know how if you play in a big monitor, your creator sim will look off because it wasn't designed to be played on such big monitors and the panels will hide half of your sim? Well, you can get extensions for the UI to look decent on your big screen as well. It obviously depends on what size your screen is, but you should get these mods for create a sim, changing appearance and buying and planning outfits. You will have more roles available as well. Another mod to get is improved family tree. So you can see icons on the family tree bigger and the connections will be better as well. 
All of these together work just fine for me, but I want you to know that there is also an option to change all of your UI to a modern looking one. It's not only the colors of it that are different, but it has a very practical side as well. It also removes buttons that are useless and can also potentially corrupt your game if you use them accidentally. I'm talking about those delay buttons on the family bin panel and in the build and buy mode catalog. In the clean UI, they just aren't there, so you don't have to be afraid of accidentally clicking on them. And now that we're on the topic of corruption, nothing's more practical than not accidentally having your game ruined. So here are two mods that are really, really necessary. No one link on delay and no corrupt death disable the mechanics that are responsible for a tombstone or an urn being deleted accidentally corrupting your neighborhood. If you don't understand what this means or what corruption is, doesn't matter, just get these mods, it will be good for you. Also, read up on corruption or watch some videos about it. It's a very popular topic in the Sims 2 community and there are loads of sources about it online. Right, I've got three more mods for you that are kind of miscellaneous and I didn't know where to put them. Dress me correctly, I really love this one. This makes it so that when your sims take a shower or a bath, when they get out of it, they will get dressed appropriately according to the time of day and also depending on if they got work coming up. They will get dressed either into their pajamas or their everyday clothing or into work clothing. Plant Sim Fix will make turning sims into plant sims much easier. Because of a bug that is in the game, this would normally be much harder to accomplish by the natural method without cheating. And the last one is a mod that displays job levels next to job titles so that you will always know what level of their career a sim is on. This can be useful info if you want to complete their lifetime want or if you use a mod like education is good, which I did not cover here because it's not really practical, it's more just like realistic. Right, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope these mods will enhance your gameplay experience somewhat because these are my must-haves. If you found this little summary useful, feel free to like the video. And if you want to see more Sims 2 content from me in the future, feel free to subscribe to my channel as well. And I always forget to say this, but do let me know what your favorite practical mods are because I'm pretty sure I missed some. And also I'm curious, maybe I'll find something new. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a nice day and see you next time.